Okay, so let's uh, get started. What I'm going to do today is talk to you about uh, DevOps and uh, in the open and the inner sourcing world. Uh, share with you what we do in Microsoft, a few of our learnings, best practices, and uh, um, just share that so that we can hear from you as well. So uh, welcome everyone again. This is Divya Vaishnavi. I'm a program manager in Azure DevOps and uh, they would love to hear from you um, feedback on this session, feedback and questions uh, on how you do DevOps um, in your enterprise startup. So reach me out at Divya Vaishnavi on my Twitter handle or um, on LinkedIn. So uh, let's get started. Every company today is uh, becoming a software company. If you think of it and think of food, travel, entertainment, shopping, hotel, whatever you, uh, all of those are now becoming software companies. Digital transformation and app modernization is one of the key initiatives at most executive levels. And maybe you're working on one of them already. The hiring of software engineers also is growing 11% more in the non-tech industry than in the tech industry. And in all mix of all of this, DevOps becomes super important. DevOps allows you to accelerate delivery while still delivering reliable products and services. It's about bringing people together through shared common goals, increased collaboration, and a focus on improvement. Technology plays a key role by enabling teams to collaborate more, enhance productivity, facilitate experimentation, a key component of DevOps, and automate their process from development through to delivery and operations. So it's all about delivering faster value to your customers by with increased efficiency and hearing back from the customers, the feedback, so that developers can continuously improve the product. So the end result is a better product delivered faster to happier customers. We in Azure uh, have a comprehensive DevOps foundation, whether it's Azure pipelines for your continuous integration and continuous delivery needs, boards for your work item or your work management, um, uh, Kubernetes, Azure Monitor, uh, artifacts, you name it, and we have it. We in developer services, the team that I'm part of, um, our key goal is to help teams to collaborate productively, ship frequently, and learn continuously on Azure. One of our other key goals is uh, the one engineering system that is helping every engineer in Microsoft to deliver with high productivity. This is something uh, that's a that's a key radar key on the radar for Satya Nadella as well. So what we have is 107,000 engineers in Microsoft using Azure DevOps to deliver their features, their functionality. If we do a back of the envelope uh, calculation. If we are able to save a second per day in the life of these 107,000 engineers, it's about getting 3.7 more people to Microsoft. If we save a minute and help with the productivity there, it's like 163 more people. And an R adds up to almost 2.7 billion per year, which is a lot of money. And thus productivity is a key focus for um, DevOps in Microsoft as well. Now, going uh, and sharing some numbers here, DevOps at Microsoft, uh, what we have is a tool chain um, which is used by, like I said, 107,000 internal users with 82,000 deployments per day, 442K pull requests, um, and we contribute to 3.5K open source repos. 12,000 folks in our teams, uh, employees contribute to open source. So open source is a uh, key um, in Microsoft. Um, we at Microsoft love open source. And with every passing year, you will see that we have done more and more in the open source uh, realm um, with 2019, culminating with GitHub being a part of Microsoft. So we, Microsoft 
continues to be the largest contributor to open source projects on GitHub and now obviously helps GitHub reach more customers and add more value add to um, the world as well. Most of you are aware of um, the benefits open source uh, brings in, how it enables the technology agility, uh, access to community of like passionate developers. Uh, but in enterprises, many times it's not um, encouraged. So we'll talk a little bit about inner sourcing as well, given the um, the concerns or uh, in your proprietary organization and teams, how can you do inner sourcing as well? So inner sourcing at a high level is um, a methodology that applies all the lessons learned from the decades of open source development and bounded by the concerns of tech leads and developers working inside a proprietary organization or an enterprise. So it's a catalyst for DevOps transformation. It's helped allowed teams to promote transparency, reuse, and enable innovation. Whether it's open sourcing or inner sourcing, it promotes higher quality of code since transparent code and processes open every lineup to wider uh, review. That's not practically possible in a smaller team. As a developer as well, you write better code because you know others are gonna use it. We as developers today are, are very lucky. We get to and choose to build applications on top of existing landscape, existing code source components, whether from the open source world or components from our sister or partner teams, so that we can spend our valuable time innovating rather than reinventing, reinventing the wheel. Few of the, um, the best practices like I wanted to share for inner sourcing at Microsoft um, is are, are like this. And it, it applies to both open sourcing as well as um, inner sourcing. So the first one is be inviting. So if you uh, like have your code base be available for folks in your team, or if you're obviously contributing to open source, um, GitHub is, is one of the great places to have that where the whole world, 38 million developers um, use it. Having a good readme and contributing file, which gives the details of what the project is about, um, how to set it up, um, what contributions are you looking for? Like one of the things that we do is we maintain a work item query, which gives details of what is up for grabs or the opportunities for contribution. And uh, having details of uh, instructions and directions for contributors as well is, is really, really helpful. So once you've invited contributors, the next one is to reduce friction. Now, when you've shared your code in a way that encourages contributions, your code obviously gets better by new features coming in from other teams or enhancing that product, which might be, say, a functionality which is needed only by th that team. So making it easier for contributions, um, obviously, uh, re like reducing friction makes it more easier to get contributions. Uh, and one of the key things there is not having um, like special permissions, making your code approachable, readable, and buildable and testable. And CI CD plays a key important role there. I'll demo some of the stuff um, in a while, but um, having a pipeline already set up just makes that build and test really easy. Uh, one of the key things is also like measuring how easy it is to launch the first build and test and doing it in say, under 20 minutes is a good ballpark or a baseline to um, to look into. The next one is putting the right gates, put, making sure that um, you have the right um, experts in the team who do code reviews, as well as gating it with your the PRs with uh, a, a CI setup, with test setup, that which makes sure, so if you have a CI setup for your PR, so, which makes sure every time a PR gets um, 
checked into your master or your main branch, there are a series of uh, rigorous quality check which happens, which makes sure that the quality of your, the code that is coming in is at the same bar. The next one is be open and responsive. Now that you have made your code available, you have contributors. Um, encourage that by measuring the time to first response. Um, it helps understanding um, as well and maybe setting up SLAs that you would want for how fast would you uh, respond to that um, PR. Having a feedback system in place for potential contributors also helps so that they can provide comments, feedback, and rate their experience of contributing to your code base. Now, we talked about all of that as a team which is uh, wanting contribution. How about uh, being a considerate contributor as well? So when you are contributing to somebody's code, some of the rules um, or the, the things to remember are go read the documentation which is available in the project, in the repo, before you ask questions. Um, provide high quality contributions, make sure your PRs have the right uh, test, and uh, respect the project um, code style and test requirements. And um, communicate early about intentions. If you remember, I talked about uh, work item query, which um, mentions what's up for grabs or what are we looking for contribution one. Um, link to that or, or show your intention of um, picking up that, that task or user story or what have you. So these four practices is what we try and follow in Microsoft uh, to help uh, inner sourcing or teams contributing to another team. Now, what I wanted to do was also share how these best practices define team performance and help drive a better product. As part of a hackathon project, a few of us in my team had done an analysis and I just wanted to um, share our, um, our details or our findings from that analysis. What we had done was we selected 12 parameters, mainly in the categories of uh, collaboration, code, and popularity. So if I have to give some examples, it's like PR response time, um, issue response time, what's the PR inflow, outflow, how fast are you closing, how many are you closing, new contributors coming in the repo, new activity, um, open issues, folks, blah, blah. So uh, 12 parameters that we used, uh, again, category of collaboration, code, and popularity. And then we measured it across each team. What we then did next was map these 12 parameters in a two-dimensional space to see if we can get clusters of team with scores ranging in the high, medium, and low. And the team categorization was done based on these parameters. Um, if you see here, what you'll see is there are three distinct clusters which got formed, high, medium, and low. And uh, knowing which, which of these teams were, we were able to confirm our hypothesis that these, the right behaviors, help define the team performance and a better product. One of those green dots there is, um, say, VS uh, Code, uh, and few other uh, teams that we, um, we like the, these, all of these analyses were done on open source repos, uh, which are owned by Microsoft. The next thing we did was like a further drill down uh, into the PR-based matrix, again, on the number of issues or response time. And what you'll find here, again, is uh, the teams which are performing better. So the A team here is a better performing team, and the B team is um, the medium category or the high and the medium category teams. Um, that one team regulate the debt periodically, and the other continue to increase the debt, then take action or whatever, go in the uh, bug freeze, uh, feature freeze zone, resolve issues, and then um, uh, address the debt. Um, again, some of these characteristics help define the team performance. 
Now let's go to the last uh, section in um, in this talk, which is the demo. So what I wanted to show was uh, the four things that we talk about. How do you make your code more um, or your repos more accessible? How do you find it? Uh, if you're looking to inner source um, contributions, PRs, CI, CD. Um, so I will switch to. I'm going to use Azure DevOps like the product that I had mentioned. And what we have here is the ability to search for uh, code base um, or for repos um, across the whole organization. So what you see here is um, the organization for MS data, which has like your SQL, Cosmos, Azure Data Lake, Data Factory, and so what have you. And I can actually search for code base across all of these projects. So let's just look for, say, SQL parser. What you'll see here is it's giving me the details of SQL parser, which is available across the various projects. If I had to go and look at specifically, say, in the data lake all, or algorithms and data science, I can go there filter it out to that or um, any of the other ones that I am interested in. So if I go and uh, look at uh, SQL um, data catalog, I'll have the details of the um, SQL parser utility. I can either reuse it, so take a dependency on this or contribute back uh, in terms of, say, adding adding new functionality to it. and. Um, adding a new functionality is um, as simple as um, making the change and creating, raising a PR um, against that, uh, that file. So it helps uh, having that open uh, availability across uh, the projects. The next one I wanted to use was a uh, few of our uh, GitHub contributions and the well-known ones. And so if I just take an example, say, of... Uh, Roslyn or um, VS Code, uh, which is available on GitHub. Each of these are set up with a CI CD pipeline. So um, if I take, say, Roslyn, what you'll see here is a, a matrix of uh, pipelines which are set up to help test this platform, .NET compiler platform as well. So if I just take an example of uh, the debug 86, uh, what you will see here is uh, this is the pipeline which uh, got triggered by uh, by uh, this change, this commit coming in on the .NET Roslyn uh, framework, and it runs a bunch of tests. If I go here, what you will see is there are 676,000 tests which have run um, for each PR. So here again, you will see there are multiple PRs that are coming in. This was a CI build, but uh, th there are these multiple PRs coming in as well. And each PR has, uh, has this huge number of tests running to make sure that the quality is, uh, the PR, new PR is not breaking any of the current changes, and the new PR also has um, the required test associated. So when I click on the PR, it'll take me back to the GitHub uh, repo and it gives me the details of what has changed and whether the pipeline has passed or not. Only when that pipeline has passed, the PR um, is closed. The last one that I wanted to do was um, take you to VS Code, uh, which again is on um, GitHub, has, uh, does few of, the uh, let me just go to GitHub and go to VS Code. Not in this repository, in all of GitHub. And uh, they do a great job at um, what I had mentioned about opportunities up for grabs. Um, the issues um, have those tags available, which uh, you can use to understand what what data or what what is available that you can contribute to 
Um, so if you if you browse through that, you'll be able to see that feature requests um, and and things like that. And um, again, it has a pipeline setup, and every PR goes through this test. Every PR has a code reviewer um, and um, goes through a bunch of uh, tests, which help and making sure that on various platform, whether it's Mac, Linux, or Windows, the, the quality of the product uh, continues to be um, continues to be at the level uh, that is required. So coming back uh, to our key uh, part, helping with these best practices of um, allowing inner sourcing, encouraging contributions, and putting the right gates and balances, having your DevOps cycle or your products uh, set up, specifically your CI, CD, uh, just helps make that whole process really smooth and uh, really fasten the delivery to the customers. Um, that's all I had. Um, if you have any feedback, like I said, please reach out to me on my Twitter or LinkedIn handle. Do you have any questions? We don't see any questions. You hear me okay? I hear you okay. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we, there's no questions at all. I think everybody was. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, so it's been the norm, and I think everybody, like Ancient Coder just said good stuff. I think that everybody's like, uh, if I ask a question, I'm going to put you in Q&A here. If I ask a question, then they may not think I'm smart, or the content <laughs> is really that good. <laughs> yeah, that's what someone said earlier. Yeah, yeah it's, it's ancient Kurdish. It's, it's all a good thing. Uh, yeah, it was neat to see. Great, uh, good talk. So yeah, it's it's awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. I mean, it was. Thank it, you so much. It's amazing. So let me ask you this: If I am a developer out there, you know, yep. not, yep. maybe might be doing .NET. You know, I could be doing anything. What is the value proposition? For me to be using Azure DevOps? Can I use it for free? Oh, yes. So multiple value propositions for Azure DevOps. Um, and the first one I want to start off with is it's um, applicable and available for any app, any technology, any framework, um, and uh, I should also add any cloud. So it's not necessarily you're just deploying to Azure, you're deploying to GCP, AWS, on-prem, it's the CI, CD tools allow you to do that. Awesome. In terms of the key value props is uh, Azure Pipelines is the only tool available in the market which helps you uh, build for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you are, like, if you're doing the open source, um, um, if you're building open source product, uh, in GitHub, and let me just go there, we have an app to, uh, the Azure Pipelines app is available on GitHub, and it's free 10 parallel pipelines um, for any open source project. And if it's a private project, you still have, like, one free pipeline. Um, and just like that is uh, that super helpful. In okay. terms of again the the technology that you spoke about, uh, we have templates for Node.js. Um, you name it, and and the pipeline support it. So gotcha. um, in terms of again continuous integration, so there are tasks available in the market for um, or in the product for all technologies possible. We support um, all test frameworks. Um, so yes. Awesome. Actually, uh, as so we that, as you were answering that, uh, we got a question from Os Babwa, who or, or Washington, I don't know, WA, uh, is asking: <laughs> Azure CI/CD free tier has limited build minutes. Is there a strategy yes. to do one build a day? The uh, the free build minutes um, are are limited. Oh, Western but Australia. You can... Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. Go ahead. You can actually uh, buy more parallel jobs um, at $40 uh, per month. So you can buy more parallel build time as well. Gotcha. So yeah, so that way, it, so if I, if I have the free minutes and I pay an extra $40 or it gets translated yes. to my currency, then my, all my pipelines will then use that new unlimited setting. Yes. 
Perfect. Awesome. What about you, hey, Jeremy? Any questions? This sounds pretty cool. Put me on the spot. Yeah, no, I've I've used uh, Azure DevOps actually for a few of my own open source projects. Oh, that's awesome. Very straightforward okay. setup, fun to use, and it's unlimited for public repository. So that's great. Yes. So so yes. let me ask you this: You mentioned about you know it's the only pipelines out there that you can do uh, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Do I have to create different pipelines for that, or can I just do one pipeline? No, you can. Or you how, can, how can do one pipeline. Sorry, I interrupted. No, you're fine. You Go can ahead. do one pipeline um, for everything. So if you see here the example of VS Code, yeah. this is just one pipeline, and it's building and testing for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, all in the same pipeline. Oh, wow. So, so you can choose how you want it and how your teams were. If I, when, if you remember when I showed the Roslyn one, they had sep created separate pipelines yeah. for different configurations. Um, so there is flexibility to do based on what your needs are and how your team operates. Perfect. Wow, that's really, really great. Well, uh, Divya, thank you so much for taking the time. I mean, I just somebody just commented. Uh, wow, that it's possible. <laughs> it's possible to yeah. do that. So kudos to you and the team for making it so awesome. Give her a hand. Uh, yeah, there's a hand <laughs> for you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, okay, everybody, we are going to be um, getting um, transition here. We have Oren Ini talking about uh, their migration of RavenDB to .NET Core. I'm really looking forward to this talk. It's going to be great if some of the stuff that they're touching. So thank you so much. Stick around. We're going to go to the slate, and we're going to get things switched around. Thank you. See you guys in a bit. Thank you. Bye-bye.